So welcome to a new version of my PHP course. Now in this video, we're going to talk a bit about what exactly PHP is and what you're going to learn in this course here and why it's going to be a little bit better structured than the previous one I have in the channel. So let's go ahead and talk a bit about what exactly this course is and who it is made for. Now here at the beginning, it is going to be a beginner friendly course, so to speak. My main goal is to make sure that people has never done PHP before and might find it a little bit intimidating because they've never done a programming language before will be able to get into this course here and don't find it overwhelming. So that is going to be my main priority as we're going on with these lessons here. It is quite normal to find PHP intimidating if this is your first programming language. So don't be scared that this is going to be overwhelming because I will try to make it as understandable as possible for people who has never done any sort of programming before. With that said, of course, this course is going to get more and more complicated and more and more advanced as we go on. But here in the beginning, it is going to be very beginner friendly. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk a bit about what exactly PHP is and what you can use it for. Now, PHP stands for Hypertext Preprocessor. Actually, it stands for PHP, Hypertext Preprocessor. It is what you call a recursive acronym when you have the word itself inside its own spelling. Now, PHP is a language that are used mainly for making websites, but it can be used for other things as well. Like for example, creating a desktop application if you know how to do it, but it is something that is more commonly used for web development. One of the reasons it's so easy to use for web development is because you can very easily embed it into the HTML when you start creating a website using HTML and CSS. And it is also a very easy language to learn compared to many other programming languages out there. And one of the things about PHP you may not know is that it's actually considered a server-side language, meaning that the PHP you're going to program is going to run on the server of your website, but not actually inside the client, which is inside the browser. So language such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which actually runs inside the browser. These languages run differently than PHP, which is actually running on the server instead. This means that when you're writing PHP inside your website, you can't actually see the code inside the browser, which you can when it comes to, for example, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So PHP is completely hidden since it runs on the server instead. So with all that said, let's go and talk about the elephant in the room. Is PHP dead? Because when it comes to websites on the internet right now, currently in 2023, we have more than 78% of websites out there that we know of that are using PHP as their backend language. This means that PHP is currently massively dominating when it comes to the backend languages that we use for websites out there today. But one of the reasons I do often hear that PHP is a dead language and you shouldn't use it anymore has a lot to do with the fact that PHP is only used mainly for web development, whereas other languages such as Python is used for all sorts of things, including you can also use Python for web development. So if you were to take the Python programming language and say, okay, how many people are using Python nowadays versus people who are using PHP, then Python is going to have much higher numbers. However, these are actually not the numbers you should look at since we need to look at how many people are using Python for when it comes to web development versus people who use PHP for web development. And when it comes to this, PHP is much, much, much higher numbers than when it comes to Python. It pretty much boils down to the fact that some people on the internet don't like PHP because it's more specifically suited towards web development, whereas a language like Python can be used for many other things besides web development. So if you're sitting there and you want to learn specifically web development, then PHP is by far the language that I would recommend using when it comes to web development. Of course, Python is also an amazing language to use for web development if you want to use Django as a framework, but PHP is just more the more popular used language when it comes to specifically web development. So just to mention a couple of websites that do actually use PHP, we do have Facebook, which uses a version of PHP. We do also have Wikipedia. Canvas is also a very popular website that uses PHP. And then we do also have WordPress, which is not really a website, but more of a content management system, which is also the most popular content management system out there today. So if you plan on using WordPress at some point in the future, I do recommend that you learn PHP since it is what they use when it comes to plugins and just the, the WordPress CMS system in itself. Learning PHP is definitely something that I highly recommend if you're just planning on going into web development as a web developer. 
But now let's go and talk a bit about theory versus practice when it comes to implementing PHP inside your website. Because when it comes to learning any sort of programming language, like for example, PHP, then things will be a little bit slow in the beginning. It is just a very typical thing when you learn a new programming language that you have to learn all the theory first. And then later on, you start getting into some more practical examples. So you can actually see, oh, okay. So that's how we use it inside, for example, our website. I will try to include as many examples as I can as we go throughout this series but it is important to know that there will be a lot of theory here in the beginning so you don't need to worry too much about it if you're looking at these lessons at the beginning and thinking to yourself okay so i can't really see how this code that we're learning has to be used inside a real website just keep following the lessons and at some point you will get to a point where you get a realization of oh so this is how we need to use everything that we learned inside a real website but now let's go and talk a bit about how I am going to approach this course here. It is my experience that people become very easily overwhelmed when it comes to teaching a backend programming language like PHP. So it's important to split things up into multiple lessons to make sure that people can digest it a lot easier. That being said, when it comes to teaching PHP, you can roughly divide PHP into three different categories when it comes to learning PHP as a language. You have the actual PHP language, which is just learning PHP and how to write it and how to output things inside your website. You know, just plain PHP programming and how to actually write things that do something inside your website. Then after learning PHP, you're gonna start learning about databases and how to actually manipulate databases by pulling out data or inserting data inside the database. A database is a place where we store information. For example, if you want your website to remember things about your users. And then the last thing you need to learn about is security. Now security is a huge thing when it comes to PHP since you are essentially manipulating data from the user and a lot of that data is gonna be sensitive data. So it is important to take security very serious when it comes to PHP because it is something that is crucial to learning PHP and you can't learn PHP and just go into it with the mindset of, okay, so security is just kind of like, like an off side thing. Security is something you need to do and it is something you need to look into at some point. And it is something that we will start looking into a little bit further into the course later near the end. I do want to point out here that I do know a lot of people think it's very important that you teach all security at the beginning when a person starts learning PHP. But in my experience, a lot of people will get overwhelmed if you teach everything when it comes to security at the same time, as you also try to teach a complete beginner the basics of PHP. So in order to digest things a lot easier, we're just gonna focus on PHP. And then later on, we're gonna start learning how you need to implement security into the PHP you already learned. Of course, there is going to be moments where we can't avoid talking about security. And when those moments come, we will of course talk about some security, but any security that isn't directly related to any sort of lesson that we're learning about is not something we're gonna talk about until later on. So with that said, let's talk about some frequently asked questions since I do want to answer some of the questions I have received in the past in my comment section. Will I include documentation for each lesson? Yes, there will be documentation for each of the lessons that I teach inside the description of the video. So if you want to deep dive a little bit further into the lesson that we're learning about, then you can of course look into that documentation and learn a little bit further about what we're learning. Will we do procedural or object oriented PHP programming? Now here at the beginning, we will focus on doing procedural PHP programming since I do know that it's easier to get people into PHP when it comes to procedural programming. Later on in the course, we will of course deep dive a little bit further into object oriented PHP programming. But when it comes to just PHP here at the beginning, like I said, it's going to be procedural. And just to mention it for any beginners watching this, you don't need to look up object or into PHP, just focus on procedural PHP and learning that. And then later on, we will get to do object or into PHP and talk a bit about what exactly it is. Will I cover a framework like Laravel? Now, something people may not know about, especially if you are a beginner, when it comes to learning any sort of language like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, whatever you're trying to learn, there will always be frameworks. Now, frameworks is a way for us to follow a, well, framework in order to build things much easier, much faster, and just kind of like to automate some things for us. And a lot of things when it comes to especially PHP and security will actually be automated when it comes to doing something using Laravel 
for building PHP applications. However, since this is going to be a PHP beginner course, and I do think it's important that people shouldn't even look at a framework until they learned the basics of PHP, we will not cover any sort of frameworks in this course here. At most, it is going to be a separate course at some point in the future, but for now, it is not going to be part of this course here. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction here. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to set up PHP and how to install a local server on your computer, since we did talk about PHP being a server-side language, so we do need to have a server in order to actually write PHP inside a website. And again, just to mention this for the beginners here, you don't need to freak out when I say you need to install a local server on your computer. It is something that takes literally a minute to do, and it's not something that's gonna break your computer or anything. It is something that everyone that does web development at some point will have to do when they start learning how to make websites. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.